British documentary filmmaker Alex Holder had unique access to former President Trump and members of his family, both before and after the 2020 election. He shot over 10 hours of footage for a new documentary, uh, a documentary series called Unprecedented footage he has shared with the January 6th committee. Here's a look at the trailer. Okay. My father, he's very honest and he is who he is. He believes everything that he's doing is right. I think I treat people well unless they don't treat me well, in which case you go to war. Can we talk for a minute about January 6th? Yeah. And Alex Holder joins us now, fresh off a closed-door deposition yesterday with the January 6th committee. Uh, it's good to have you on the show. Morning. So, uh, one of the things that I have read about, if you could um, confirm that in the, the scenes that you shot there with uh, Donald Trump's family, often what they say is very different than what they told the January 6th committee. I'm thinking specifically Ivanka who told the January 6th committee that she deferred to Bill Barr, believed him. Um, but speaking to you, uh, she seemed to be backing the big lie. Yes. I mean, I, I, to be honest, the, uh, the Trump kids, at, at least in my interactions with them, uh, sort of always echoed their father's position. So at the time, it wasn't particularly surprising. Uh, but clearly, there seems to be some sort of uh, discrepancy between what uh, Ivanka said to me uh, sort of in December uh, December the 10th and what she uh, said to the uh, the committee. So uh, you know, other people will decide what that means materially, but there's clearly a difference of position for sure. So uh, how fascinating it is. And, and by the way, what a jarring line coming from Ivanka to grab your attention at the beginning <laughs> of the tease. My father is very honest. Yeah. And then you have Don Jr. saying he's always right. Of course, those two children were desperately calling, trying to get Donald Trump to intervene on January the 6th, saying something must be done. So, yeah, quite a disconnect there, right? Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. And I think what, what is interesting as well in, in Unprecedented in the series that I directed is the, the, the absolute admiration and love that the three children have towards their father. I mean, it's, it's absolutely clear and evident. And you know, Eric says at one point that his father is his best friend. So they totally admire their father. And you know, I, I see their, it, it is interesting the way that certain narratives have come out recently about how there may have been sort of changes of, you know, sort of differences of opinion. But, uh, but it's certainly, uh, they, they certainly do admire him very much. And, and part of the series is also about the dynamic between the three children and who could potentially be the successor of Donald Trump. Uh, Alex, at one point you asked Donald Trump himself about January 6th. Let's take a look at that. Can we talk for a minute about January 6th? Well, it was a sad day, but it was a day where there was great anger in our country. The people uh, went to Washington primarily because they were angry with an election that they think was rigged. A very small portion, as you know, went down to the Capitol, and then a very small portion of them went in. But I will tell you, they were uh, angry from the standpoint of what happened in the election, uh, because they're smart, and they see, and they saw what happened. and. I believe that that was a big part of what happened on January 6th. Of course, I think the election was rigged because Donald Trump told them that lie again and again and again. Um, I'm curious about the circumstances, just taking a step back of how you've got so much access to Donald Trump and to the White House. There's, you know, some people in the White House have come out in the last couple of days around your testimony and said, oh, we didn't realize, you know, what, what the cameras were for or who he was or any of that. Uh, what was sort of the idea and the pitch from you to the White House about tracking them so closely in those final days? Well, at the end of the day, it was about sort of, you know, we wanted to find out who these people were and, and we wanted to sort of explore the, the, the dynamic of the Trump family. And, you know, for them to say they didn't understand what we were doing, I mean, we, we weren't hiding you know, the cameras. I mean, you know, we, 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 were, we were literally up close 
with the president uh, you know, at rallies in the buffer zone. I mean, my cameraman, Michael, was probably at some points closer to the president than the Secret Service agents were at certain points. And you know, we went into Mar-a-Lago with three cameras. And uh, it, you know, so, so the idea they didn't know that we were there and, and didn't know what we were doing seems you know, somewhat strange. Uh, in terms of the pitch, I mean, I, I wanted to give them the opportunity to be able to answer my questions and to l let them have their, their voice and for people to then sort of determine you know, whether they sort of you know, agree with them or don't agree with them about all sorts of different aspects of their life. I mean, this, like I said, the series isn't just about the election and the events that took place. Obviously, that's a key part of it. But, uh, but, but I think, I mean, just on that clip that you saw just now, I mean, and, and as you just said, I mean, you know, people will be able to see Donald Trump uh, answering the question about January 6th and, and come to their own conclusion as to what his role was in that particular, you know, that particular tragic event. Alex, you know, why we've, heard, people there? we've heard from people like former Attorney, Attorney, Attorney General William Barr who said Donald Trump knew he lost the election and he was fishing around for some reason to say it wasn't. Was it your sense in real time talking to him that he knew he had lost the election? So I definitely don't want to disagree with the former attorney general, but at least in my interactions with the president, I actually think that he really genuinely believes that he won, which in mm. some cases, in some, I think is actually more, more, more terrifying uh, because you know, there, there isn't really much of a conversation then. I mean, it's sort of you know, trying to discuss something that's you know, irrational. Uh, so, so because I didn't think that he really believed it prior to meeting him in the White House. But after having met him in the White House a month after the election took place, he was convinced that the election uh, was, you know, was stolen from him. And he started telling me how we need to find brave judges to overturn this sort of uh, this result that he believed to be erroneous. So it was, uh, you know, in some ways, if he was if he was lying, it, you know, you could sort of see, all right, well, well maybe we can persuade him. But, but I don't think it's possible. All right, Alex Holder, thank you so much for being with us. Greatly appreciate it.